Hey guys, Luca here. So today I want to make a video on starting over as a software developer and how I would start my journey. So to start, I think it makes a lot of sense for me to make two videos. So this one will be strictly focusing on before becoming a software engineer, but rather the preparations, the interview aspects, whereas the second one more so about what makes a good software engineer and how to actually learn hands-on activity. Because to many people, like if you haven't been a software engineer before or just new to the tech field, there's actually something very ironic and funny here is the fact that what you do for an interview may not necessarily represent what you will be doing on the job. And many times for a lot of these interviews, they don't really explain a lot about what's good software engineering. Unfortunately, that's the reality. But still, you need these skill set in order to get that job. So before we can talk about what makes a good software engineer, we have to first understand how can we get that interview? How can we prepare ourselves? A lot has changed. There has been so many new tools, for example, BART, ChatGPT. And to make this video, I actually did a bunch of research using BART. So I would say the first thing is how do you become qualified? And qualification is something that has become very, very vague nowadays. If you are still in school, they have me a relevant degree, anything that's software engineering related, for example, computer science, cybersecurity, data science, any of these specialized track that t is tangible to tech will qualify you for a lot of these entry level roles or internships. But if you are not someone who have relevant degrees, then things become a lot more tricky. What you might have to consider to do is either by self learning a lot of these things or attending a boot camp where they teach you and prepare you for a lot of these software engineering roles. So I would say the most important thing for many of us is picking the right programming language. What is the first programming language that you should learn? Because to become a computer scientist, someone who do software engineering work, you need to be able to know a programming language. And here my recommendation for pretty much everyone is Python. I think Python is something that's very useful for a lot of beginners. And for most of the interviews, you should also consider using Python, especially if you are just coming off. Because Python is something that's pretty easy to pick up. And for interviews, you can save you a lot of hassles and try to make you more error prone because you now have to worry about like, oh, casting and stuff like that. You can get straight into coding more easily than many other languages. And here, I want to recommend one of the best resources out there. It's Harvard CS50. This course has been free for many years and it's available to the general public. I think overall it's a really great course for many people who are interested in becoming a software engineer. It's something that teaches you the surface, like how to get started, what's some of the fundamentals. And I have organized some of the key chapters for you. So if you don't have a lot of times, so you can skip around and try to focus on these sections. But the sections that I recommend would be search, array, algorithm, data structure, and Python. Of course, if you have more time, you can focus on the SQL and then the full stack portion, HTML and CSS and JavaScript. That's also very useful depending on, hey, you don't really know what you might be interested in, but let's learn something more than just Python. This will give you a little bit more depth and something that you can potentially put on your resume. I will actually recommend a lot of people to apply to a lot of internship too. Many internships, aren't limited to only people in school. I think it's also a great opportunity to get your foot in the door, especially as someone who might be switching into tech. I think applying to internships could be a great way. Many times the requirement for an internship job is also less tedious, and this gives you more opportunities to practice an interview. And once you have that first internship, you can transition and turn that into something of a entry-level full-time role. Of course, nothing make you more comfortable with using a programming language than actually using it. And uh, many times when I ask Bart, they also tell me the same thing. So work on some personal projects, start coding, and work on open source. Of course, a lot of these are easier to say than done. But of course, if you're someone who's really passionate and think you really want to get into tech, then maybe it is worth it to give some time and try to see what type of project you might be able to build. It doesn't have to be something extremely fancy. But there is something that's very interesting that I have observed recently. A portfolio isn't necessarily something like, oh, that you can just build in a week, in two weeks. Because many times when we look at it, 
it's very obvious like the complexity like oh is this something that I just followed while I was in a bootcamp or is this something that I have spent many times really thinking about like is it just a simple web application or is it like a full stack applications like what type of depths are you going for if is it possible like I can just learn this like in a week or two like you know this is something that you really have to be careful and for interview there's two portions Leco style question and system design for most people you're if you're just starting off you're applying to entry level anyways then the system design portion won't be as relevant which is a great news for a lot of people because you really have to take a lot of times in order to get used to some of these system design questions now that you don't have to focus on system design so what's Leco? Leco is a website where they ask you a lot of questions where you can solve and these questions focus on algorithm and data structure so here you really want to focus on some of the more popular things like oh what's a breadth first search with a depth first search like how to do a minimum spanning tree like for example for data structure you have to have a good understanding of what's an array what's an array list what's a hash map and what's a tree like some of these come up very very often and then you should try to know the corresponding syntax in python like how do i create a new hash map how do i create a new tree for example like some of these can help you so there's a actually a blind post about like some of the top 20 or 100 most common type of questions like they try to organize it into some sort of pattern that help you study a lot of these things more efficiently so i will try to find it and see if i can link it down below so yeah i would say like to start off like many of the computer science like when you learn any programming language the learning process is actually very similar like they all teach you like oh what's the keyword like if statements for loops while loops what what do they mean like what are they and funny enough like in all the languages there's always something that's similar here so which is like the backbone of like how you can pick up other languages fast it's kind of like how can i do these similar things like in another language and where you can cross reference and compare so i would say like here python does it really well like it really allow you to pick up these things more efficiently so i would say like definitely watch cs50 or any relevant courses that's free online i know stanford also offer a lot of courses online as well where you can learn a lot of these things so i would say these are all very useful resources especially for someone who is thinking about switching it's more difficult than someone who already have a degree because a lot of time when you have a degree you kind of solidify yourself as someone who took relevant courses that the company know that you were in an educational setting that you did this for like you know four years you might not have to spend as much time learning and picking up a program language but more so focusing on the interviewing aspect but if you're not someone with a relevant experience then things become tricky maybe you have to be more willing to accept like an internship role or any role that potentially is not your first interest what's maybe something not your first preference but it kind of opens the door and help you get into that next job so i would say like that's my recommendation and if i was to start over without a degree and i think this is something that i would do overall i think from my observation like most boot camps don't actually do a lot of justice especially when the market isn't really hot so i wouldn't say like oh going to a boot camp will guarantee you to find a job but of course it's not a bad solution especially if you have the funding for it so to conclude making to conclude a, a quick summary i would say like hey let's just learn python like python will help me do the interviewing and also help me learn about these concepts so why not learn something that i would use for this interview because i don't know what type of role i'm gonna be doing anyways let's just learn something that's flexible and useful in most cases so i would say python is a great resource and try to focus on algorithms and data structures there are many useful books and youtube videos online that's available on these topics maybe i need to start memorizing maybe i just need to start grinding lead code and that will also help me get that job so i would say like this will be a strong focus so yeah guys that's it for this video i hope this video was informative if you have any questions feel free to leave it in the comment below i am making a separate video on the software engineer like what makes it a, how you can become a good software engineer not just focusing on the interview and getting the job so if you're excited for that video check it out next week and once again thank you so much for watching make sure to like and comment and subscribe let me know what you guys think I will talk to you guys next time.